CO2 gas laser is a molecular gas laser based on a gas mixture as the gain medium which contains carbon dioxide, helium, nitrogen and possibly some hydrogen, water vapor or the xenon. Such a laser is electrically pumped via an electrical gas discharge which can be operated with DC current with AC current for example 20 to 50 kilohertz or in the radio frequency that is RF domain. It is a four level molecular laser and operates at 10.6 micrometer in far infrared region. The CO2 gas laser is capable of continuous output powers above 10 kilowatt. It is also capable of extremely high power pulse operation. Let's see the construction of CO2 gas laser. This laser is a gas discharge quartz tube of about 1.5 mm square cross section and 260 mm length. A water cooling system is connected to tube to maintain the temperature. A DC current with AC current example 20 to 50 kilohertz or the radio frequency RF power supply is connected to the tube. Tube is filled with mixture of CO2 gas, N2 gas and the helium gas in ratio 1 to 4 to 5. The ratio is can be varied depend on application of laser. The two mirrors arranged externally, one is fully reflective and other is partially transmissive, forms the optical resonator. Back and ground ends of quartz tube are fully reflected and partially reflected respectively to get laser output. Atoms are excited by AC or DC electrical discharge. The CO2 molecules are active centers where N2 atoms helps CO2 molecules in achieving population inversion. Now let's try to understand how energy is transferred amongst gas molecules. It is depend on vibrational modes. Let's try to understand the vibrational modes in molecule. Radiation in the infrared IR region of electromagnetic spectrum has the energy to excite vibrations of covalent bonds. The absorption of IR radiation causes bonds to stretch and bend. Stretches correspond to the increasing and decreasing of the bond lengths within a molecule. Bends corresponds to increasing and decreasing the angle between bonds in a molecule. The animation below show the possible vibrations of the CO2 molecule. There are three vibrations, symmetrical stretching, asymmetrical stretching and symmetrical bending. All three vibrations require different amounts of energy. So the CO2 molecule absorbs IR radiation at three different wavelengths. Although each CO bond in CO2 is polar, its linear shape means that the molecule as a whole does not possess a dipole moment. During the asymmetrical stretch and bend, the symmetry is lost and a dipole is momentarily created. It is possible to excite these two vibrations with IR region. During the symmetric stretch, however, no dipole moment is created and so IR radiation is unable to excite this vibration. CO2 thus absorbs at only two wavelengths in the IR. These vibrational degree of freedom are quantized. At any one time, a CO2 molecule can vibrate in linear combination of these vibrational modes. The figures below show the possible vibrations of the CO2 molecule in diagrammatical form. The energy states of the molecule are represented by three quantum numbers M, N and Q. These numbers represent the amount of energy associated with each mode. For example, the number 0 to 0 indicates the molecule in this energy state is in pure bending mode with two units of energy. Each vibrational state is associated with the rotational states corresponding to the rotation of CO2 molecule about its center of mass. The separation between vibrational rotational states are much smaller on the energy scale 
compared to the separations between electron energy levels. The N2 molecule is also characterized by similar vibrational levels. So these two diagrams shows vibrational mode as well as the rotational mode. Now let's see the working mechanism of CO2 gas laser with the help of energy level diagram. In this diagram, the lowest vibrational levels of the ground electron energy state of CO2 molecule and an N2 molecule. The excited state of N2 molecule is metastable state and it is identical in energy to 001 vibrational level of CO2 molecule which indicated as EFIU in this figure. So let's see the pumping mechanism. When current passes through the mixture of gases, the N2 molecule gets excited to the metastable state. The excited N2 molecules cannot spontaneously lose their energy and consequently the number of N2 molecules at the metastable state level builds up. The N2 molecules undergo inelastic collisions with ground state CO2 molecules and excite them to E5 level. Some of CO2 molecules are also excited to the upper level E5 through collisions with electrons. The E5 level is the upper lasing level while the 0 to 0 and 1 0 0 states marked as E3 and E4 levels acts as the lower lasing levels. As the population of CO2 molecules builds up at E5 levels, population inversion is achieved between E5 level and the levels at E4 and E3. Random photons are emitted spontaneously by a few of atoms at the energy level E5. The spontaneous photons traveling through the gas mixture prompt stimulated emission of photons. The photons bounce back and forth between the end mirrors, causing more and more stimulated emission during each passage. The strength of stimulated photons traveling along the axis of the optical cavity, that is the discharge tube, builds up rapidly while the photons traveling at angles to the axis are lost. The laser transition between E5 to E4 levels produces far infrared radiation at the wavelength of 10.6 micrometer. The lasing transition between E5 to E3 levels produces far infrared radiation at 9.6 micrometer wavelengths. E3 and E4 levels are also metastable states and the CO2 molecules at these levels fall to the lower level. E2 through inelastic collisions with the normal or unexcited CO2 molecules. This process leads to accumulation of population at E2 level as the gaseous mixture heats up the E2 level which is close to the ground state tends to be populated through thermal excitations. Thus the de-excitation of CO2 molecules at the lower lasing level poses a problem and inhibits the laser action. The helium atoms de-excite CO2 molecules through inelastic collisions and decrease the population density of CO2 at E2 level. It is also aids cooling the gaseous mixture through heat conduction. The CO2 molecules are once again available for excitation to higher state and participate in lasing action. CO2 molecules are excited to the upper lasing level continuously through the collisions as the population inversion can be maintained in the face of continuous laser emission the laser operates in continuous wave mode this is all about the CO2 gas laser now let's see the actual CO2 gas laser a CO2 gas laser demonstration in which the glow running through the center of the tube is an electric discharge. This glowing plasma is the gain medium for the laser. The laser produces a tiny intense spot on the screen to the right. The center of the spot appears white because the image is overexposed there. 